Alright guys, in today's video what I wanted to do is take some more time to talk about the PlayStation 5, but more specifically I want to focus on a few points that I feel as though some people are either not fully understanding or they're just not really rationalizing. And to be fair, I think it's completely understandable. I know that there's a lot of people who are immediately going to assume that this is just some kind of damage control, but it's really not. I'm genuinely trying to get people to understand what's going on right now with Sony and Next Generation and why I think that maybe some people are jumping to conclusions a little bit too soon. So before we get into this, if you could do me a favor, be sure to hit the like button on the video. It really helps it out and make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. But the first thing I want to focus on here has to do with marketing. I think the most important thing for people to understand is that the official PlayStation 5 marketing doesn't seem like it actually kicked off yet. Even though that video of Mark Cerny doing his deep dive into the PS5's technical specifications is currently sitting over 10 million views, which is insane, I don't think that was actually meant to be part of the PlayStation 5's marketing, nor do I think Sony was expecting it to create, honestly, a lot of negative conversation for the PlayStation 5. However, it is very understandable why it's creating a lot of negative conversation. I don't agree with it, but I do understand it. And I think it's because the difference between Microsoft and Sony right now is Microsoft kicked off their marketing kind of in a very surprise way. Like nobody was expecting it and they just put the pedal to the metal and they haven't really stopped. And so people were just happy at the fact that they were getting information regardless of what information it was. But all the information that Microsoft gave was good info. Not only did they show the console, but they showed a new game. They talked about the specifications and they've talked about a lot more as well. And so people were just really happy with this. Meanwhile, Sony has been very quiet. And I think that they have a very good reason for being quiet. The main reason is because I think they are still trying to extract as much out of the current generation as they possibly can. They know that they have a lot of big games lined up for release, such as Final Fantasy VII, The Last of Us Part II, Ghost of Tsushima, and they don't really want to get in their own way. And this was the big concern I had with all of these awesome games coming and then next generation coming uh, at the end of this year. How is Sony going to balance talking about these two things? And so that, I think, is the explanation for why Sony has been so quiet. But the thing is, with that silence, there has been a ton of anticipation built up, which I will admit I probably didn't help by constantly talking about it, but I can't help it. I'm extremely excited for next generation. And so what we saw was Sony kind of talk about the PlayStation 5 I believe twice in 2019 through Wired articles, which is perfectly fine. Then they did a logo reveal in January, but there's no denying that after that logo reveal, people were 100% expecting the next time Sony talked about the PS5, especially considering what their competition is currently talking about in regards to next gen, to be something big. They were expecting a big reveal event, a massive announcement, something similar to what we got with the PS4, at the very least seeing some games, seeing some demonstrations, seeing something. But instead, we got Mark Cerny, you know, giving us a very technical explanation of every single aspect of the PlayStation 5, which in itself is not a bad thing. And I think Sony tried to mitigate any potential backlash they would have gotten for this by explaining that this was supposed to be for GDC. It's meant for developers, but as I said earlier, that didn't stop people, millions of people, 10 million from watching this and kind of scratching their heads. And now I think Sony is maybe regretting this a little bit and feeling a little bit of heat because not only did this just not come off the way people were expecting, but on top of that, they announced that, yeah, the PS5 is the weaker console this generation. And people were just not really happy with that. And it's not because... I don't think people are unhappy at the fact that it's a weaker console. I think they're just unhappy at the fact that basically that's what Sony announced and that's about it. Like they just dropped the specifications and nothing else. I firmly believe, as I said before, that if they dropped like a new game trailer or showed off some demonstrations, we would be having a different conversation. And so this leads me to my second point. Again, just to reiterate, the first point is I don't think people fully understand that we still know very little about the PS5, and I think that a lot of the big major announcements that Sony is going to have in regards to next generation have yet to be revealed, and I think that people need to understand that 
The second major point here that people I think are not really fully understanding is why the PlayStation 5 is the weaker console. So because people need to understand that it's pretty clear at this point Sony at no point in time was trying to create the world's most powerful console. While we did entertain that conversation frequently here on the channel and we entertained a lot of the leaks and the rumors that were also entertaining that notion, we did also entertain the notion of Sony maybe trying to strive for that $399 price point once again because of how you know, well it worked for them with the PlayStation 4 as well as the PlayStation 4 Pro. You know, Sony is sitting at over 108 million PS4 units sold and they are the market leader. And there's no doubt that when they look at this, they understand that price certainly has to play a big role in that, right? It just, you know, helps that they have amazing games, obviously, and that's gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But I think people are not fully understanding that it's become very clear that Sony is trying to find a price power balance. They're not just trying to brute force this. They're not just trying to create the world's most powerful console and then have the price re reflect that. What they're trying to do is create a very balanced console, a very fast console, you know, hence the emphasis on the SSD, but a very capable console all around. And that's what I think people are not understanding. If Sony really wanted to, they could have created the world's most powerful console. They could have tried to outdo Microsoft in this area. But I think Microsoft made it pretty clear that their goal from day one was to make sure that if they were to be beat by Sony in terms of, you know, having the power crown, Sony would have really had to go above and beyond to do that. And as you can clearly see, that's exactly what they would have had to do. But instead, Sony was like, look, we're trying to keep the cost of the PlayStation down as low as we can. So that way we can sell it at a, I'm assuming, a more affordable price point, either $399 or $449. While there are some people who don't want to hear that, that is just the reality. As I've said before, Sony looks at the success of the PS4 and they think, how can we replicate that with the PS5? There is absolutely no doubt that a lower price point than the competition would really help them. Now, we don't know the price of these, of these next-gen consoles. I am pretty much 100% confident in saying that the Xbox series will not be less than $499. There's just no way it could be. In fact, I think a lot of people are anticipating it might be a little bit more expensive than that. However, I'm also confident in saying I do not think the PS5 will be priced the same as the Xbox series. I just don't see Sony doing that at this point in time based off of the conversation that is happening right now when you look at the power difference between the consoles. So I think people just need to be a little bit more understanding of what exactly Sony's trying to achieve here. It's not all just about raw power and then allowing the price to reflect that. The PS5 is a very powerful, a very capable console, even hardcore X. Xbox fanboys should know this and most of them will tell you this it's just not as powerful as the next generation Xbox but I think that's because Sony just they know what they're doing here they know what they're trying to achieve when it comes to mass appeal with their next generation PlayStation and the final thing I want to say in this video and I think it's probably the most important is that people seem to forget very quickly that power really is not the be all end all I don't mean to sound like a broken record but guys I have just seen this conversation escalate more and more and more and I'm not saying that people shouldn't be upset with Sony right now. It's understandable if you are. Like, if you were expecting a big reveal, if you were expecting a more powerful console and you didn't get that, and you're just disappointed at the way they chose to talk about it, that's fine. That's understandable. I would say don't lose all hope because, in my opinion, the best is still yet to come. I think that that's pretty obvious at this point. But people seem to forget that at the end of the day, Power for most people is not the determining factor in what they choose to buy. It's a combination of power, price, uh, performance, and what games are on offer. And this is where you're going to see the different strengths and weaknesses of each console. I think if Sony has a $400 or a $450 PS5 that is proven to be very powerful and the games look really, really good and you know they show some really great exclusives they tease some sequels such as the next spider-man game you know um the next horizon game stuff like that and they have a pretty solid launch lineup then i think they're good to go man i don't think they need to worry about anything um if the xbox series ends up being 500 dollars, there's no doubt that a lot of people are just automatically going to go with the cheaper 
option. And I know what a lot of people are going to say, but wait, MBG, what about the Xbox Series S, the Xbox Lockhart model? I am anticipating that this thing is going to get announced, and I am anticipating that it will, in fact, end up being $300. So it sounds like Microsoft is potentially getting to hit, uh, getting ready to hit Sony high and hit them low. And if that's the case, then I think that's where Sony's really going to have to flex their greatest strength, which is their games, more specifically their, their exclusive games. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people who are like, well, does that even matter now, MBG, because they just announced that Horizon Zero Dawn is going to PC? Well, yes, Horizon Zero Dawn is going to PC, they also reiterated that not all of their games are going to PC, and they still plan to have PlayStation exclusive games in the future. And so with that being said, I firmly believe that at the end of the day, putting everything else aside, Sony's greatest strength is going to be them flexing hard with their PlayStation 5 exclusive games, and then really showing what these games are going to be capable of. I mean, we hear about Sony's first-party developers bragging on and on about the you know speed and the 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 basically the power that the SSD is going to offer in terms of changing game design. While it may take a while until we see that happen with third-party games and developers, there's no doubt that if they are creating PlayStation 5-only titles, Sony's first party can really take advantage of that and potentially, potentially do things in their games that literally you can't see being done anywhere else, which is awesome. And that right there would be Sony's ace in the hole and their greatest strength. And they may already be working on this as we speak. They may already have it as part of their big marketing plan. And if they do, then I think that that's going to leave a lot of people feeling really good. But just to kind of recap the video, guys, there's basically three points that I think people are failing to understand or are just being forgetful about here. The first is that Sony's PlayStation 5 marketing hasn't officially kicked off. They still have a lot more games left to release before you know, they end the generation with the PlayStation 4. And it's very clear that they are saving the big announcements for later on. The second thing is people need to be more understanding of why the PlayStation 5 is the less powerful console. It's because Sony is making it that way. Sony is trying to hit a certain price point and they're trying to not purposely go out of their way to create the world's most powerful console. They're trying to create a balanced console that they can possibly market as the world's fastest console but possibly something that is going to be more affordable at the end of the day for the mass market. And the third most important thing that I think people are forgetting is that it's about the games, guys. Like, we have to see the games. We have to see what these games are going to look like on these consoles. It's easy to get ahead of ourselves when looking at spec sheets and comparing and being like, haha, your console's weaker, mine's stronger. But, guys, there's a lot left for these companies to say for both Sony and Microsoft. And considering Sony has barely said anything yet, I wouldn't jump to any conclusions, and that's basically where I'm going to leave it at. So I hope you did enjoy the video. I know it's you know a lot of next generation, specifically PS5 talk, and again, I know this may come off as damage control to some people, but I'm going to end it here, and yeah, I want to see what you guys have to say. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Leave the video a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and haven't already. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload, and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.